What's up guys, JST Sense here, and I was working on a video about bottlenecking, but I was getting blocked by an issue that was causing me a bunch of problems that I finally figured out, and I figured this would make a good opportunity to do another one of those troubleshooting teaching videos where I actually show you guys how to get around some problems that might otherwise have seemed to be pointing at one issue when it turns out to be something entirely different. The new DG7 series cases from EVGA offer PC enthusiasts more of what they love, like tempered glass side panels, vertical GPU mount, integrated RGB control board, DG tuner, and an awesome three-year warranty. To learn more about the DG7 series of cases from EVGA, head to the link in the description below. So my setup here is an 8700K and an Asus Maximus X Apex board. I've been running this for a while with a Titan X. Obviously, like I said, we're going for some bottlenecking stuff. And um, I, I've been having a very strange issue. The same SSD and the same Western Digital Black hard drive I've been using forever started to give me some problems. And I'll show you guys what those problems are, but first I just want to explain the problem and then I'll demonstrate it for you. The ADATA, I think it's an SX900 SSD I have in here is quite a few years old. It has been used a lot. Uh, didn't get any sort of smart errors, but I started getting complete system lockups, unresponses, and then the drive would drop off from the BIOS detection entirely, leading me to believe that it was a bad SSD. But upon switching the SSD and the problem persisting, thought that maybe it was a bad SATA cable. Turns out that wasn't the problem either because now I've got three different SATA cables that I've used, two different drives, and the problem persisting. Now I've got everything working fine for the moment. And just to show you, here's my Samsung Evo 850, or 850 Evo 500 gigabyte SSD, and then my Western Digital Black showing up just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the OS and I'm gonna show you in real time what happens because it is extremely easy to recreate. So this is one of my disk images that I use for my testing, things like Blender and Cinebench and all that. And as you can see, everything is working fine. But let's go ahead and load up something like Cinebench, something that is gonna start to sort of stress our system a little bit here. So if I could just go ahead and run my CPU test. See the moment I hit run? No. Oh, there it goes. See how that kind of took a minute and then it started to go? These are, the, these are the telltale signs that something wasn't right. When I, I've been using this system long enough now to know when something isn't right. Um, what if we go ahead and do something like, oh, I don't know, let's launch MSI Afterburner. Um, let's play some Far Cry. I need to download the latest driver though. And the problem has now started. I just tried to install the latest driver for Far Cry 5. As you can see, we've got a little spinning wheel. It's thinking, I told it agree and continue. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Control Alt Delete, Control Shift Escape. We still have a moving cursor. We have not hard locked or anything like that, but our OS is completely unresponsive. I can't close windows, nothing. So now this is the part where it gets interesting. And this is why I'm making this video because someone might start to think at this point, especially if they're in, inexperienced with computer hardwares or troubleshooting hardwares, computer hardware is more than one of them. This is where troubleshooting and experience really starts to come in because somebody who's new to this world might have started to think that they have a bad installation or even a bad disc. Let me show you why. Because now if I just hit reset on here, because we have no choice but to do a hard cycle of power on this, when we come back up, you will see that it will take us straight to our BIOS because now the computer is not going to see any sort of boot drive. Remember, our SSD is our boot drive. So now if we go over here to, see my first thought now as somebody who's dealt with this a million times is, Okay, sometimes a BIOS will change the boot order. It's rare, but it does indeed happen. And because I have two uh, storage drives on here, I have a standard hard drive, which is used for all my game files and mass sized files, so I'm not filling up my SSD. And my SSD is my OS. If you go over here to the boot tab, you can see now only the Western Digital is showing up. If I go into the boot ride override on the left, again, only the Western Digital is showing up. Now, part of troubleshooting at this point would be to try another cable or make sure you're getting power to the SSD. Now, I've already done all of that, and I'm going to spare you guys me watching me do all that in this video, but that's what I would do next. I would make sure the cable's plugged in all the way. I would make sure the power is plugged in all the way. And because I do know power works considering the hard drive is using the same pigtail as the SSD, I do know that there's power. In fact, we were just 
using it. So now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and clear the CMOS. Even though we were running all optimized defaults, no overclocks, no anything, we are going to go ahead and clear the CMOS. And I'm gonna show you that clearing the CMOS actually brings it back. But I've also repeated this test a good 10 times today and just using the PC normal within a few minutes, it will give you the exact same result. And we're gonna talk about why, and we're gonna also talk about how to fix it. So most ASUS boards have this green clear CMOS button on the back. I'm gonna hold this for 10 seconds. You're gonna to have to check with your motherboard manu uh, manual to see where your clear CMOS is. Every motherboard has a clear CMOS. This is basically forcing it to revert to its out of the box settings. Uh, it's gonna clear any sort of stored memory in the BIOS. Now, since we cleared the CMOS, it forces us back into the BIOS to check all of our settings, make sure that they're correct. If we go to boot, look, what's magically back? our Samsung 850 Evo. So that tells me it's not a bad drive. It tells me it's not a bad cable. It tells me it's something wrong with the actual motherboard BIOS itself. Now, here's what we're gonna go ahead and do. We are going to go ahead and update our BIOS on the motherboard. I have a theory. I've, I have used this setup now for months without a problem. Ever since Coffee Lake has launched, I have used this CPU and this motherboard and this configuration without any problems. What has changed is recently there were some Windows updates that were actually causing problems on Intel SSDs. Now this is not an Intel SSD, but I do believe that our problem is going to be somewhat related. The fact that I can even get it back is actually a good thing. Unfortunately, my SX900 uh, ADATA SSD, which I've been using for this test bench, now has a corrupt installation on it though because of the, when it failed, it did something catastrophic and now Windows needs to try and restore that installation. But updating your BIOS is one of those things that I typically tend to go with. If it ain't broke, don't fix it because it, there's a lot of things that could potentially go wrong with updating your BIOS, a sudden power loss, your dog trips over the power cord, your significant other or your kid trips over the power cord in the middle of flashing, which can brick your board. Again, fortunately, Asus has BIOS flashback features, which don't even need a CPU, RAM, or anything plugged into it, but that is, that, that is an Asus feature. So if you're not using an Asus board, chances are you could end up bricking it. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go ahead and take this flash drive. I've installed the latest uh, ROM on here, on the root of this drive, and we're gonna use the easy flash to bring it back, which should fix our problems. ASUS updates take a little while because it does multiple things each time it restarts, so it will do multiple restarts. Again, every motherboard's different. Check with your manufacturer because the last thing you wanna do is start. See, now it's doing the BIOS update. It was doing the management engine update a second ago. Yeah, so this is, you don't wanna cut power in between this. See, it just turned itself off again. That, that would freak you out if you know what you're doing, but I'm warning you now, so you know. If it starts doing all these restarts, it's normal unless it doesn't stop doing it, that's not normal. And here's our new revision right here, 1301. We were on what, 0214 or something like that before. So if we go into our BIOS, we should now obviously see our drive. The question is now can we go into Windows and, oh look at that. We have all kinds of things showing up now. And now we're gonna just kinda of do a little gambit of tests to make sure it works. But the point of this video is, sometimes your problem could look like it's one thing, but it's something else entirely. Obviously our problem was not with the SSD. This might lead some folks to think that the SSD not showing up and just suddenly dropping off and locking up is a problem with the SSD or potentially a cable or have you looking at things like power supply. I'm pretty positive the entire issue here was a Windows update causing a conflict with an old BIOS on this motherboard. This was a very old BIOS. This was a, this was a launch BIOS when Coffee Lake first came out. So as you can see, that uh, took us in a completely different direction. So where we failed last time was when we tried to install our driver. So we're gonna go ahead and try this again and see if it actually makes it through. Um, I don't anticipate there being a problem, I really don't. If the problem persists, then I have no idea where to go next, to be honest with you. But I'm pretty sure the problem will be fixed because it was persistent through different uh, SSDs, different cables, and different power plug. So the only thing that changed from when the problem started until the, you know, before the problem started was a Windows update. So yeah, Jack went up to Microsoft once again. All right, so it's working obviously. We're doing Windows updates now, 76% left. This is the major update, the 1803. I couldn't even get this far before because the drive kept, mis let's just say disconnecting from the controller in some way. 
but it's all working perfectly fine right now, which is a, a good thing. The point of this, like I already said, sometimes problems look like they can be leading towards one thing when it's something completely else. So this is one of those times when I would definitely recommend if you're running an old BIOS, definitely update it if you feel comfortable with it. Please, please check the manuals with your motherboards to make sure you're doing it the right way so you don't brick your devices. I had no choice because obviously the update paths and how many updates uh, old we were or whatever was obviously conflicting with the age of our BIOS with our particular hardware. So we had to do this to get it up and running. There is that guys. I, this, this literally was an impromptu video because it was stopping me from making the video I was trying to make. So we're gonna go ahead and get on with that. But if you guys enjoyed today's video, why don't you give it a like and maybe share it with someone that might be having some sort of a similar issue. I hear people all the time tweeting me and emailing me about their system just stop responding with a little spinning wheel and that's exactly what I was getting right here. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Computex coming up next week. You guys are not gonna wanna miss the coverage on that. We're gonna try and give a, perspective, a, a unique perspective of Computex, not just running around doing the obligatory, here's this, here's this, here's this. We wanna do more of a, an experience for you guys and give you more of a first-hand look of what it's like to experience Computex as a PC enthusiast, not just what's at Computex. But we're gonna go. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, we'll see you in the next one.